Hey everybody, we are back once again. Your real pastor is for a review today. It's review Tuesday. Is that a and, thing? Uh, sure, why not? Yeah. And we have this review for you today. A little late, but uh, because my colleague here was so very loyal and kind, he wanted to wait to do the review. I did. I did. I just just out of principle, I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it without you. So we're here. Yeah. We are, of course, of course, reviewing the masterpiece Encino Man, uh, rated five out of five, two thumbs up by Scott <laughs> Ebert. Uh, the 1992 classic stars. I'm just kidding. Uh, That's, we're talking. We're going back to the 80s, though. We're talking Wonder Woman yes. 84. Yes, we are. We are talking Wonder Woman 84. So Gary, I was supposed to go see it with Gary yeah. and our good friend Denzel, which for some reason, technical issues, he's not here with us. But we'll still give you his thoughts. And um, they're supposed to go. I was supposed to go with him and Gary, but I had to back out because I found out that I was exposed to COVID. And then that whole thing happened, which if you guys saw our show from last Friday, you know the story there. Yes. Yep. So I yeah. went to see and this so, with Denzel, my brother in law, Michael. Hello, Michael, if you're watching, and Denzel's parents. We all went to see this together. So. Mm hmm. Yep. And I had, uh, I had to wait. See, Gary was actually great. And he said, Hey, here's access to my HBO max so you can watch it. And, yep. uh, and it was hard for me, but then by the time I started feeling better, I was like, no, nah, I can hold out another week and go watch it in the theater, which I did. I went to the theater after I was feeling a little better to watch it because I just felt like after everything we have said on this show, mm -hmm. I had to go to the theaters and watch it first. Hey, I, and I, I told you yesterday or the other day that I applaud you for that because I assumed you'd watch on HBO Max and hey, no harm, no foul. You're quarantined. You're sick. Turn on a movie. You know, mm -hmm. I probably would have done that. But you stuck to your guns. You were uh, uh, loyal to the to the to the cause of the theaters. And uh, I, Thanks, I applaud sir. you for that. So that was you walking the walk of the talk of the show, talking, walking. So, yes. yeah, whatever that means. So, good job. <laughs> Yes. So, Gary, what is, as we get started, what is what would be the one word you would use to describe this movie? Meh. Is that a word? Meh. Meh. Yeah, it's a word. Word and a feeling. So that was good. Yeah. I just, that, that's me. That, yeah. that, if, if you could only give me one, I just go, meh. Yeah. Yeah. I thought about mine, and I think mine is sequel itis. Oh, that's a good. That's, that was mm -hmm. my, that's my word for this movie. Mm -hmm. So, but as we get into it, obviously with our one words, you might be thinking, wow, they're going to bash this thing. But you know what? Why don't we start off, Gary, with the good? What is the good, the good that we found in Wonder Woman? Okay. Okay. The good, uh, Gal Gadot, Gal Gadot, Gadot, whatever her name is. Once again, she did great in the role. Um, mm -hmm. I thought the Wonder Woman stuff, her character was really good. Mm -hmm. um, I thought Pedro Pascal, uh, the Mandalorian himself, was very good in this movie. Mm -hmm. um, that's about it. Um, <laughs> there it uh, is. I mean, just, uh, I mean, the Wonder Woman stuff, her character, the performance Gal Gadot did and Pedro Pascal was the best part of the movie, in my opinion. So mm -hmm. we're talking good. That's, that's just kind of, Oh, and I'll say uh, that it was set in the eighties. I'm all mm -hmm. for that. I told you guys on Sunday night at the uh, wonderful Super Bowl part party you guys hosted um, that I love all things eighties, love eighties culture. So it being set in the eighties was, that was cool for me. I like that. So. Yeah. 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 I think the good for me and I agree, I think Pedro Pascal uh, was probably to me the best part of the entire movie. Um, I thought, you know, Gal Gadot, Gadot. I thought she did well as as well. Uh, we already know that she can do this character justice and that she can play mm -hmm. this character well. I yeah. just, you know, so like, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Yes, you caught it. I'm so proud of you. Anyways, um, so but I thought I thought she did well. I thought that was good. Um, I even like Chris Pine coming back. Mm -hmm. uh, I thought that I thought he was funny at times and. Mm -hmm. um, at least he served a purpose. Let's put it that way. At least he served a purpose for being there. Um, that was one thing I was worried about that they're just throwing him in there just because, but, um, but I'm glad he had a purpose there. Um, I thought the uh, opening scene with her as a kid doing those games, I thought that was really cool. Mm -hmm. um, being able just to kind of see that. 
And then, of course, once that ended and you saw the lesson that was to be taught, you knew that was going to be the lesson yeah. she had to relearn or remember at the end. Um, mm -hmm. So I kind of like that set up. And then I really like the whole, I mean, you see it in the trailers, her fighting the tanks. I thought that whole scene was actually pretty cool. Yeah. So so I did like that as well. Um, so yeah, so it had, it had, it definitely had some good moments. Mm -hmm. um, very, very, some good moments there. And I thought those was probably some of the best uh, of it. Well, is this the time to share our favorite part since we're talking about the good spoiler? Are we doing spoilers? Uh, it's been out for I mean, a while. might as well. I mean, it's been out yeah. for a while now. So yeah. So, spoiler so, alert. Here's your official spoiler. If you haven't seen it, yeah. go to theater or HBO yeah. Max. It. All right. Like, let's just be well, real. Now pause for three seconds to let you click off the video. And we're back. There we go. <laughs> I think it was like two and a half seconds. But uh, <laughs> my favorite part of the movie was when she was losing her powers and she's mm -hmm. walking through the streets with Chris Pine and she realizes mm -hmm. she can't help and she's just yeah. devastated by it. And then her decision to give up Chris Pine and continue being Wonder Woman as she walked away from him. I thought that was the best scene in the movie, in my opinion. I yeah, love yeah. that part. Um, so I and just wanted to say that before I moved on to other things. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and then she started like regaining her powers and all that. And I did mm -hmm. like that she finally started learning how to fly, you know, yeah. because of what Chris Pine told her. It's like flying's mm -hmm. easy. Like you just yeah. ride the waves or whatever, ride the winds. And mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, good. She's actually flying as she should be. That's cool. So yeah. I thought that whole thing was kind of cool. And I mean, yeah, I mean, that's the thing. It's like I felt like there was a lot of really cool moments in this movie. Mm -hmm. A lot of cool moments, a couple, couple cool scenes. So there was there was. You know, there's quite a bit good about it, but moving right along, because I feel like we have to get to this. Uh, what was the bad? And um, it is, I think this is where you really start to see kind of what we were talking about. So go ahead. So Gary, tell us what um, was some of your bad. I want to preface this by saying, um, in my opinion, this is nowhere near as bad as everyone is saying it is. Okay. Um, if you read stuff online, this is the worst movie ever made. Yeah. Um, and we've got this. I don't want to get on a tangent because it's not for that, but we've got to get away from this. If something's not a master masterpiece, Dark Knight, Citizen Kane, then it's complete trash. There's a middle ground. And I think this is where this movie fits. Uh, however, saying that, I do have problems with this movie. Yes. Um, and the first thing I want to talk about is the rushed story. Mm -hmm. um, this uh, this item, uh, the stone what was a stone rock crystal thing thing yeah it shows up is some for some reason it's in a jewelry store in the mall and these buffoon uh well uh, the reason did make thieves. sense Gary. yeah remember it was a black market thing that was going on and they had found uh, okay it. and that's okay. why it was in the background the, the the jewelry store was a front okay we'll see all right well yeah. so at least that I makes was, sense let, let me let me justify okay. that one okay okay all right um the explanation of it I thought was rushed, like what it actually mm. is, what it actually does, what it actually comes from. We get a little scene in the middle of what it is. We need, I think we need a little bit more of that. And speaking of the scene of the jewelry store, those thieves and stuff, I was getting Batman and Robin vibes <laughs> in that scene. I was like, oh man, it, it looked like it was, I was like, what is going on? Um, uh, so yeah, I thought the whole rush story of what that thing does, the whole wish thing, I felt was very rushed. It was like, here, you know what I'm saying? Just a little bit more exposition on that um my next issue uh feminism on steroids yeah. um this movie painted a picture that all guys unless you're chris pine uh you know whistle at women stalk women you know every other scene was like her and Kristen wig walking through a party and they're all stalking them gawking them and it's like I it was just way over the top you know, mm -hmm. and I'm not against, you know, uh, you know, I have a five year old daughter. You have three girls. I want them to be able to watch a movie down the road and, and celebrate, you know, yeah, Wonder Woman. Yeah, girls. But this was just so over the top. It was like mm -hmm. one long Gillette commercial, um, <laughs> you know, and it was just it, it took me out of the movie, you know, mm -hmm. um, and the two other things. <laughs> Sorry, and then I'll move on. Uh, Kristen Wiig, her character. I've been a fan of Kristen Wiig since she's been on Saturday Night Live. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think she is very funny. All right. Not necessarily did I have an issue with her in the movie, but her character, mm -hmm. we have seen it so many times. Yes. Um, she's Jim Carrey in Batman Forever. She's Jamie Foxx in The Amazing Spider Man 2. Is the exact thing ever. 
Um, and in her character, you know, I think they missed an opportunity trying to do something uh, more character development there. And last but not least, probably my biggest issue with this movie is the way Chris Pine came back. Okay. So the wishes that were granted in this movie were so outlandish, which is fine. So over the top. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. Comic book movie, I'm fine with that. You mean to tell me he can't just come back as Chris, he had to come back as another dude? Right. You know, he's about being taken out of the movie. He was like, I'm sitting there thinking, what's going on with this guy's life? He's completely, he's yeah. just pretending he's just this other dude and it's not even really him. Like, it's him, but he's in another yeah. dude's body. It's like, it was like that Chris Rock movie, Down to Earth, you know? Yeah. Um, I just, I could, that was probably my least favorite part of this movie. It completely took me out. That's, that's the bad, those things. Sorry. Yeah. I don't get upset, but I, I hated the way they brought him back. Hated yeah. it. Yeah. Nope. I completely understand. I do want to tag on to what you were saying about we've seen this character before, because honestly, like the very first thing, and probably because of her character being Cheetah, like with mm-hmm. Kristen Wiig and stuff like that, probably the biggest thing for me was because it was Cheetah, I was like, Michelle Pfeiffer did it better. Like, yeah. <laughs> that's yes. literally what I thought. And yes. <laughs> that was just like, she did it better. And I, with you, I felt like her character, again, nothing against Kristen Wiig. She was an actress doing her job, doing the best with what she was mm-hmm. given. All right. Yep. And so, and so for me, it was like, there's just no reason for this character to be in this movie. There's no reason yeah. at all. Like I, I seriously, I thought about it afterwards and I'm like, I still don't know why this character was in the movie. I think it would have been better. And maybe I should save this for a fix it, but whatever. So, mm-hmm. but what probably would have been better is just introduce the character that she works with Diane or Diana, yep. that she works with her and then use that for the, for the, for the next one, use it for the, yep. for the third movie. Um, I don't think it need to be on that. This is why I felt like when I say sequel itis, um, yes. I just felt like her character was unneeded. Um, I felt like it should have been focused on Pedro Pascal and the wishes thing, but then you're bringing in Chris Pine, how you brought him in. And then you're dealing with uh, Diana trying to also figure out where she fits and what she should do and what the real truth is, which, and then you're dealing with, um, you know, like Barbara is her name. That's right. I forgot. Yeah, Chris, Barbara, yeah. With Barbara, you're dealing with whole, whole, her whole character arc and storyline through it as well. So you're having, mm-hmm. you're having these three, three different character arcs that honestly, you know, two of them could carry the movie themselves. And the third mm-hmm. one was kind of like, you know, you could like, again, stuck her in a different movie with a different story. I just felt like it was, it was just way too, like you said, way too much. And I think yep. maybe that's why we got less of what we needed, like explanation of the stone, like what, what God actually made it and what mm-hmm. the real thing is. instead of this, like, Oh, let's hang out to this random guy. Let's read this book, read it to us yep. and say, okay, let's move on. Like, like, come on. Like, it was just like, all that was just kind of ridiculous. And, um, and I just, I just didn't. And I, and I thought like you too, it was like the feminism on steroids. Like this is what every guy does. And it's it just kind of like, I mean, yes, there are those jerks out there, but it's not every oh, yeah. stinking guy. Yeah. I mean, even when Barbara like got her wish and, you know, then all of a sudden all the guys notice her and I'm just like, literally all she did was make her clothes less frumpy. Like, <laughs> yeah. like I don't understand. Yeah. I mean, it's just, yeah. Yeah. And that's the kind of stuff that just really bothered me was just, they try to cram so much story into this. And it's like, did you not learn from other comic book movies? This isn't what you do. And mm-hmm. so that's the thing that bothered me is this is just, they should just focus on Pedro Pascal as the main villain. Yep. And, and just have him and her and the stone and how the, all that interacts. And it, and I think it would have been a much better, more concise movie mm-hmm. because I'll be honest, probably for about 20 minutes of this movie, I forgot I was watching a wonder woman movie. Oh yeah. Because I was yeah. like, I thought I was just watching Pedro Pascal's character. Like mm-hmm. I thought it was his movie for a while. And I was, and then it was like, Oh, now it's the cheetahs movies for a while. Barbara's movie. Yep. Oh, that's right. I forgot Wonder Woman's yeah. in this. So I had an issue with that too. Yeah. Pacing was very, very poor because it was like it was like three chunks of different movies. Because mm-hmm. on top of all that, you had this storyline with uh, Pedro and his son, mm-hmm. which I, right. I was fine with, but make that, you know. It was a good storyline too, honestly. It was. Yeah, it was. Um, but yeah. it Too much. That's yeah. why I say sequelitis. 
too much. Yep. I, I, we, I agree a hundred percent. Sequel itis, yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. They try to be bigger, badder with everything, and it's just like, listen, the first one worked so well because it was a tight, concise, straightforward story introducing a character, and I know you don't have to reintroduce her, but there's a reason why the first one was so good. Yep. <laughs> and you just try to do too much, too fast, and it just yep. didn't work. Yep. So, so moving right along down how we normally do our reviews next is the pastor approach. Mm -hmm. And so with this, we see what in case for those who may have forgot, because it's been a while since we've done a movie review like this. Um, so what we try to look at with the pastor side of things is, you know, what were some elements or some things that were redeeming or we thought was good that could you know, impact our faith or help us feel uh, encouraged through it or anything like that? Or maybe just a good depiction that we're like, yeah, that's a good depiction of life. And, um, and I will say, uh, for me, Gary, I think the main thing that stood out was just, well, I guess there's two things that stood out is one is the importance of truth and the importance of seeking out the truth. And because there's only, I mean, cause I thought they did a good job with this, which I'm surprised they did it was like, there's only one truth. Yep. And so, and, and especially at the end when everybody was making wishes, how everyone made those wishes and guess what? There's consequences to those wishes. And it's unless- chaos. Yeah, it's complete chaos. So everyone can't just have it their way. There has to be one set of rules. There has to be one set of truth. And I thought that was really great, which kind of tied into the other part of, you know, the whole, like th there would be chaos if everyone just got what they wanted all the time. And, mm -hmm. you know, if everyone was that selfish, but you have to be selfless if you actually want to help others. And so yep. those things kind of tie together, but those are the two main things that stood out to me. Yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm right there with you. Uh, that, the whole be careful what you wish for story, which if told the right way, always works because, mm -hmm. I mean, it, if everyone got what they wanted, you know, it's just kind of like, you know, being, I don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but if we give our kids everything they want, every time they ask, our homes or their life will be completely chaotic. And that was, I think, the story I took away from it and the whole, you know, script, you know, uh, Matthew, what does it profit a man to gain the entire world but forfeit his soul, you know? right there. You know, you gain all your wishes, your wants, but look at what you're giving up. You mm -hmm. know, um, I thought as much as I dis, as much as in this movie, I disliked um, that overall message. I thought they did very well, um, especially, you know, talking about that and yeah, talking about truth. And I was, I was sitting in a the theater and I was like, I'm really glad they went there, you know? Mm -hmm. So. Yep. And the importance that, and they, Hey, they may have had a different agenda for having that point there, but doesn't oh, yeah. mean that the point is incorrect. <laughs> exactly. It's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I thought that was good. Um, so the dad aspect, uh, Gary, what are your thoughts there from a dad perspective? Um, pretty similar. Um, I mean, I think this will be a movie that I allow my kids to watch as they grow up. You know, there's uh, having a daughter. There's movies I want to um, her to be able to watch. And, you know, um, but, uh, you know, the message uh, we saw at the beginning, you know, don't take shortcuts. You don't mm -hmm. take, you know, you take shortcuts to win, you, you lose at the end of the day. Um, I thought that was a good message for everyone but kids, you know, because she was, you know, young. Um, and, you know, what we just talked about ties into the dad stuff, too, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I think a lot of the same thing. I know with both these Wonder Woman movies for me, I did go into kind of thinking like, OK, when and where would I want my girls to to see this movie because, you know, these movies, just because again, the girls and I want them to see, you know, good depictions of strong women that mm -hmm. isn't like super extreme feminism, you know, yeah. you know, that just says all guys are trash, but, um, <laughs> but uh, you know, so there's some issues there and stuff, but I think that um, for the most part, like, honestly, I guess what I liked about it is there was nothing even remotely close to anything like, like really sexual or anything like that. I mean, like nothing was seen. I mean, the first one had one worse scene than anything in this movie. Um, mm -hmm. And then like, it just, so most of it was pretty clean. I don't remember much language or I anything mean, like that. And so. Very little, which is yeah. great. Really is a relief these days. Um, the closest yes. is probably when he got the stone from Kristen Wiig in her office. Yeah. I mean, that's probably the closest. And, um, you know, going back to my, when our kids watch it, when, yeah, uh, it'll have to definitely be a disclaimer trying to yeah. say, you know, with the feminism things like, Hey, 
this is this is their message, but not all guys are like this, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but always be on the lookout when you're walking always. around at night, you know. It, yes. But it's like, so it's like Washington. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? It is. It is very. Yes, yeah, some things are right, but they're going a yeah. little far. Remember, movie, you know. Movie, yeah. But, yeah. but yeah, but I still think that that even having her having to learn that lesson as a kid, like what you said, and then having to relearn it at the end, and then have to be selfless. So like even those aspects, it's like, see, that's what makes a strong woman. Yep. So, you know, someone who does things the right way, doesn't take shortcuts, but then is also selfless to help others. And that's what truly makes a strong woman. And I'm like, okay, you know, those are the things that I, I would love for my girls. If they're going to learn something from movies, those they can learn that from this one. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. So Gary, I guess now has come the time where we must rate this. Great. Going to rate it. And I know this must be, there might be a little... A little tough, but uh, Wonder Woman 84. Let me pull up here our little rating system. Uh, Gary, do you want to go first or do you want me to? Sure, I'll go first. Go ahead. Um, I wrestled with this. I really do. I really did. Um, but I'm going to give it I'm going to give it three out of five. Um, there is a part of me that wants to give it two. But mm -hmm. with Gal Gadot and all the Wonder Woman stuff for the most part, and the overall story, I feel like it slightly outweighs the bad. So can't go anywhere near a four or five. Going to yeah. go right there. Three out of five. Three. Oh so goodness. three. So just a reminder, folks. One is complete trash. Two yeah. is watchable. Three is good. Four yeah. is great. Five is a masterpiece. Yeah. So that's a rat. So Gary gives it a good. And um, so I guess for me, I get. I thought about this a lot, Gary. And um, I'm just going to say it and then explain. But I went a two. Okay. So I went a two. It, it's it's watchable. Um, you know, had his good parts and stuff. So it's not complete trash, like you said. It's yeah. watchable. But what, what pushed it for me for putting it down to a two is that is that the difference between a two and one of the difference between a two and a three for me is would I want to watch it again? And honestly, mm -hmm. I really have no desire to watch it again unless I'm watching it with my girls when they're older. So yeah. because of that, it's like, all right, it's just, it just have to be a two, you know, it's watchable. It's not horrible, but it wasn't mm -hmm. as good. And maybe some part of that is because I expected it to be better than it was, but, yeah. you know, so that's what for me, it's like, eh, all right. And plus the whole forgetting I was watching a Wonder Woman movie didn't help. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. And I'll tell you that scene, I was talking about my favorite part. Mm -hmm. If that scene's not in the movie, this is definitely a two for me. That. That's yeah, probably yeah. The, the scene that bumps it up to a three for me. Uh, Denzel uh, asked us to share. He gave it a two as well. Mm -hmm. And he wanted to share that he thought the CGI was really bad. Yeah. Um, in parts. And, uh, there were and definitely yeah. moments you knew it was in front of a green screen. Yeah. There was one part I looked at him. I can't remember exactly where it was. And I said, hey, because he's he knows more about that stuff than I do. And I said, yeah. is it just me or is that bad? He goes, that's bad. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nice. You know, the people that put these movies together, they're more talented, smarter than me. But that's just something I noticed, you know. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe they cut corners because of the pandemic. I don't know. Maybe. Um, because, yeah. because especially movies of this caliber you usually don't see bad CGI. Usually it mm -hmm. happens every now and again, but yeah, you usually don't see it. So there you go, folks. Oh. Gary. Would you say, would you, yeah. Sorry. Would you say if one the first Wonder Woman was a step four for the DCEU? Was this a step forward, step back, or just a standstill? I, I would say more of a standstill. Yeah. Honestly, I don't I don't think it was really a step forward. I think it just kind of yeah. okay, we you know, they raised the bar a little bit and they just kind of kept mm -hmm. it there. Yeah, kind of. Yep, so, I agree. So yeah. well, definitely watch it, form your own opinion. Well, if you haven't watched it and you watched our review, I mean we spoiled everything, but we gave you a warning. Uh, yeah. but, uh what did you think of Wonder Woman 1984 or WW84? Let us mm -hmm. know in the comments. And, uh, yeah, let us know in the comments what your thoughts were. What will you rate it out of one out of five Hail Marys? And don't forget to like, subscribe, share, and uh, just get out there so you can get honest feedback on movie news, movie reviews that uh, without all the nonsense or the, as Gary said earlier, has to be a masterpiece Citizen Kane or it's trash. You won't get that with us. Hey, just listen, honest, real dudes. You, you may... You may not always agree with us, but we'll, one one guarantee you're gonna get you're gonna get our honest opinion. That's right. So that's just how we are, you know. Yeah, so. and that's what we think. Right. Thanks for joining us. 
and uh, look out for our video this Friday. Yep. Come here. See you guys. Goodbye.